No, but seriously, I would like to now call the August 14th Parks and Recreation and Housing Board of Meeting to order to start with the roll call. Yes. Aaron Angel? Here. Scott Coleman? Here. Mr. Thomas Davis is not here. Chris Page Lewis is not here. Sam Libby? Here. Nicholas Novella? Here. Mr. Van Olsen not here. Mr. Tim Walsh? Here. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's move on to approval of the agenda. Uh, does anyone have any questions or request of changes to the agenda? And if not, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move to approve the agenda. Have a second? I'll second. All right, all, all, all in favor? <laughs> all four of us? <laughs> yeah, all right. Awesome. Okay, moving on from there, then let's go to approval of previous month's minutes. So, uh, does anyone have any questions or requests of changes to the meeting minutes from last month? No? Okay, uh, if that's the case, then can I get a motion to approve the last month's previous minutes? I'll make the motion to approve last month's minutes. Right. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, do we have public invite to be heard? We do. We have a subject. Okay, then in that case, we can move on to old business, uh, what we've all been waiting for. So excited about this. Mm -hmm. So let's move into the first item on the old business here the library, recreation, and culture ballot questions update. Who's covering? Ben's going. Ben. Ben, are you on the spot? I'll jump in as needed. <laughs> so I, I think most everybody is, sort of, is familiar with what has happened over the past couple of meetings, but we'll go through it. So um, on the 18th of July, the City Council um, approved to move forward with the um, writing of the, the package for the Recreation Center and the YMCA, um, both separately and together, um, with some more information gathering for to be prepared for the August 8th meeting. <clears throat> At the August 8th meeting, uh, it was decided to put both of those together and um, was approved to move forward with that second reading on August 22nd. So that is the YMCA proposal and the recreation proposal, the recreation center proposal together. Um, those numbers are certainly available as far as you can get that. Okay. You guys have the readers for that as well. So mm -hmm. um, the effect of those. And that's kind of the, the gist of where, where we're at with that part of it. Um, linked to that, we did a presentation of feasibility study on the 18th of July um, to show uh, the need, you know, specifically to call out the need for a recreation facility. Um, and that I believe that went well at, at council to uh, get that, that general support in terms of for that for the idea. There were not very many questions concerning the feasibility study. Um, and we had some some drawings out of it. Some drawings updated uh, right not right now but pretty previous previously this we had one other on the feasibility study and this is the most updated rendering that we've got and that we used here. Uh, I think there's three different pictures there. And I think they came out pretty good. It's something that shows a very large, we scheduled this at 90,000 square feet. Modern building, a lot of trying to take advantage of the views. That was something that's been a, a common theme at that site. Um, indoor to outdoor is kind of a theme. Uh, this picture, I think, is it's a really cool picture, but it, it doesn't give all all we really want to see. Which is also there's folks working out outside, which is a really neat aspect of, of the idea of this. Again, it's a, a rendering of possible options. Taking advantage of those views at that site, and yes, the glass and the water <laughs> issue that, that we recognize too. And again, these are renderings that there will be a lot of public input to how we manage the final thing if things go go ahead. And, uh, and the, the glass is something that we've talked quite a bit about because it it seems like we always want to have all this glass in our facilities, 
then the first thing we have to do is is find ways to put blinds up on everything. So uh, again, very conceptual, but uh, really wanted to, to show the mountain range and, and the ability to have um, the activities outside as well as inside. Um, but again, that those will be conversations if the, the ballot, <clears throat> excuse me, would pass that we have uh, more public input and, and uh, feedback on that. Yeah. That that's really covers both of those both of those items that where we're at with them right now. Are there any questions? Is there any discussion you want to talk about? Okay. I just want to make sure everybody has the handout from our legal staff about what yeah. uh, nice. what uh, we can and and cannot do. Uh, it's very official. Forward. Yeah, that's great. I like the, the logic for uh, that. I, I don't see it. Yeah. and then this one. Wild, wild uh, west. Press from from Eugene last week. So um, again, we are we are in the midst of of being at that point where we as staff and you as the board will not be able to advocate one way or another, pro or con. Um, you know, we are finalizing some things, but that date may have actually happened on August eighth. Right. Where um, we are not able to uh, advocate anymore, um, but certainly you as a group and staff off duty can advocate, but you cannot do that while you're um, serving as as the board. But we can ask factual questions. You can ask fact factual, and we can give you fact the questions. facts back as we know them. Good preamble there. Yeah. Okay, so as of what day? We believe that it, it was last, last Tuesday, yes. Damn, I broke all the rules. <laughs> you didn't do that as a board member, though. <laughs> I am a city employee. Barely. Well, then Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. As long as you're not on the clock. Not, yeah. okay. Yeah. Or using city resources. Okay, that's. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have discussion topics that you want to talk about on this? Yeah, I, I just have a quick. The first the only question I really have on the on the ballot measure is: um, Is there been any feedback or any concern that it's like three pages long, and um, there was a concern about bundling and it was too complicated, or oh, no, like no. nothing. <laughs> no, totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We um, have not heard that, but okay. I am sure, especially with the rec one, that, that has the biggest component of that because not only are, are we asking people to vote yes or no on building facilities, but we're also asking them yes or no about uh, providing the uh, sale or giving away park property. So right. that's, yeah. that. I, I do think that, um, we really need to educate people, and, and and again, I'm not trying to say for yes or no, but to really be able to read the ballot, ask questions if if it's not clear, because it, there's going to be a lot there, with, especially with you know, the arts and entertainment is also on there, and the branch library and the preferred level of funding is uh, three separate questions. So it is a lot. Do you or we have any influence on ballot language? I would say probably not. And that's because uh, there are all these legal requirements that we have to follow. Uh, the city has um, um, gotten with legal counsel to help draft that um, because there's also Paper requirements that we have to announce, and um, so that they're not gonna, nobody's gonna have the opportunity to say, I don't like the wording, or, or I think we should do that. It's gonna be on the uh, August twenty second council meeting. Yeah. So if you have your, if you have thoughts and you want to share them, that's probably as close as you're gonna come. Just whether it's with me or another council member. Just that, for equity. 
Um, I, I just, I believe that, I mean, I think Longmont can do what we want a lot more than we say we can, because we can't. Um, and then for equity, I think ballot language needs to be written in a way that an eighth grader can understand, so it needs to be run by eighth graders, because that's the, that's, that's who, that's, that's our constituent base can read on that level. So I just need, I just would like to see it written so I that. Think, I think that question of Lexile, that's the Lexile. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah I mean, if I can't understand a ballot, Question, there's a problem. Yeah. Well, these are going to be complicated, without a doubt. Yeah. And you're just right. Legal counsel is going to draft them. But we, do, we are going to get a look, and we'll have, you know, I'm, I'm certain that whatever comment occurs on the 22nd will kind of be up against whether the bond counsel is advising. But <coughs> on, on a noted readability or level of readability is going to be important. For us. Uh, yeah. And I will share that as well. Yeah. With because I really just want this to be what Longmont wants, you know, like uh, what I want is not, I mean, I'm just a board, you know, I'm just on the board, like, but I'm supposed to represent what Longmont wants, but we can't tell what Longmont wants if they can't read it. Yeah. I'll just add that not, not only the ballot language itself, but there are other places where it's described, I think there's a TIB notification that goes out separately in the paper book, and uh, um, anything, that, anything factual from the city that describes it. Differently, there's an opportunity to do that in different words than the ballot language. Yes, right. yeah. so the ballot language has certain requirements, like the first sentence is in favor, limited sentence, I think, of how it has to be phrased. There's just different places you could also message it differently. The city will do an information document that will be mailed out to every household, uh, again, giving, giving the facts. Yep. We'll also have statements of, about. Uh, people that are voting in favor of the, the measure are doing so for this reason, and people that are voting against it are doing so for these reasons. Um, but that will, and, and then I, I think that information will be put into um, poster size and placed at city facilities. But that's kind of the extreme. Uh, it goes on the website too. Right? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Exactly. I'm not sure if your council will find it to be factual, but putting something on there about this not being the end of the process would be helpful. As we mentioned earlier, the idea that the public will, would likely or will have further input if approved to get into the details and, and that feedback. It's not like we're voting in only one version of it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's important. Any other questions? So is that, so, and that's it for city communications. Paige had asked about the city rep. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we will, we will be able to provide the factual information, but I think what she was asking, we would probably can't do now. The question I have is about Centennial. Um, if there's that plan to state in the, not the ballot language, somewhere else that quoted cost of any rep like renovating that yeah. versus this, that's a good comparison, I think, to call out facts that are in order. Mm -hmm. Maybe as well as the fact that Centennial's currently probably not everybody knows that. What um, I know, um, uh, Harold mentioned this um, at the last city council meeting. That there was an MOU being built with the Y. Is that going to be made public or? Yeah, when it's when it's when it's ready, we're meeting again with them is it tomorrow or Wednesday to. More meat on that, so we can get it through it. No matter the wire that way. That process is going to be really interesting. Is there, is there a working name for what you want to call this besides the YMCA project, which then includes the city's part? I, that is a problem, but I, I think that that's how it was uh, passed on the first reading. I don't know that we can change that. Yeah, that's what I was oh, saying. Outside of the of the ballot, I guess we could call it something. Yeah. But do you have suggestions? I, I've just been calling it the city wide facility or something like that. And taking off the MCA yeah. and MCA. Um, and meeting with the city. Um, that, that's one of people's concerns is you know, either city giving money to quote unquote private organizations, not ones that 
and so, um, or, you know, you're having this facility, but I have to pay for you a third party, or can we just have, uh, you know, a right to stay in it? And you want to move it over because I see you there. So we're going to do that. Because people like the idea that their passes could go to discounts, that's worked out really well so far. And um, we can put those on the back of this. And in, I think you heard Harold say last week that why was okay with calling it something once if it if it happens, not just calling it the Y, but it could have the city's name right in, yeah. in with that as well. His language in the video or in the thing wasn't super clear. Like, I mean, I, I knew what he was intending, but I right. wanted to take the quote and actually put it into some of my marketing pieces. It was not quite clear. So, you know, I'm just run, hoping to find my name or something that says, put in the, yeah. the link quote. Um, it just said, that's, that's in the book. Um, so if it's not ready. That the formal yeah. agreement would happen if it passes. Right. right. Yeah. So, I mean, are, so is the why then somehow like specifically on the hook for what you're delivering for $12 million to the city? It will be, yes. Okay. Um, and, so you know, the, the, the why has a little different timeline than what the new rec center would have. Right. Because we would be we would have the resources needed to move forward. The why has to get approval by voters before it can be eligible to go for the tax credits. So there is a lag time between when they would get the 12 million from the city and when they could start moving forward with their with their project. Right, so it's more like 2026. Probably, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Yeah, no, no, I'm done. Do you on the, the master plan or? I, yeah, just um, in in the rec center, I just if there's you know you would have these few drawings, and if there's other ones that you consider more drawings from them, you consider it to be. Right now, this is what we're going to get. Um, I will tell you that Chris. Castellic, who's been working with the, the city, has announced to Ben and I uh, late last week that he is leaving Perkins Will. Uh, and his last day will be August 30th. So um, the whole master plan, we're going to have to regroup with a new staff person once they're assigned to it. So, okay. so that piece of it, which does not. Guiding document towards it. Yeah. We need to uh, get a vote for it. Yeah, it's a little shot fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never, never was a guy in that. Yeah. He's, he's worked for them. His, I think his whole career. Oh, okay. It doesn't sound like he has a, a plan going to the next job. So. Oh, okay. um, so I guess uh, well, it's still live related. Sorry. No, please. Okay. Um, is the um, so I came up and Open Council was great about it. I think Dr. Waters read the whole um, answer um, a couple of meetings ago about oh, uh, I think it was on the 18th um, doing scholarships for youth at the, the Y program to reduce the cost because the difference in the cost, even though it seems nominal, but like five or seven dollars. Entry or whatever is a concern by many of the voters. Um, so. And they have the, the YMCA has a special scholarship program. They 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 uh, 
And it, I think it's not that loud right now, so hopefully it's not just the one white one on the side and then one on the other side. The way I think it's going to be. Okay. I, that'll be something we'll understand a little bit better because they, that's a big difference they've been in is in that drum and in our upper drum. So it's, they, and <laughs> I think they have, I don't think the scholarship is going to be an issue and I think it could uh, carry over to Longmont recreation pass holders as well. The, the the whole the whole twelve million dollars is is kind of a, an interesting concept because twelve million dollars helps build the facility. It doesn't go towards any of the money that it takes to operate the facility. So they are committing to us that they can operate the facility with the proposal that, that we've agreed to with the, the recreation pass holders, but it will have to be evaluated annually with the commitment as long as we want to be partners, there will always be that break for city taxpayers to be able that our recreation pass holders as well. Would there be any interest by this city to backfill it so that it would look more equitable between people who go to the Y and then people who go to other city recreation facilities? Uh, we haven't had that conversation. That The money is not in the ballot question to right. backfill it, but it could be something that would, could be addressed in the future. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, a, a lot of uh, partnerships are done that way. At Johnstown, um, why they they built that facility and they actually give the Y some funding to help operate it. So there is history of that sort of thing. But yeah. that is not in the proposal right now. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things that people are like, well, this is what I'm paying for the centennial pool, I'm gonna pay the same the same amount at the same place. And it's like, well it's not the same thing, it's not fifty years old. And it's like you can put the new facility or you can go to the new facility the Southwest one want and pay what you're paying yourself. That's well, really plus, there's always the option that if, it, let's say that the ice rink is really the thing that they that people want to go, they they may have that choice where they would rather be a Y re, uh, member because that's their area of interest, mm -hmm. and then they pay just the normal Y rate. They wouldn't uh, they wouldn't have access to the other recreation facility. Right. And so that's kind of the compromise we've tried to work out. It, it isn't as clean as if it was just a city facility, but I think it's a, a fair um, arrangement that we've tried to come up with that gives the Y the money they need to operate, but also gives a, a break to the, the taxpayer. Okay. I think, um, I think we, need to, we need to get clear with the council does on uh, what that's going to look like. Uh, those who are going to advocate on behalf of this proposal uh, are going to be asked, they'll be asked over and over again. It, it, it was, it's what kind of killed them. It's what really hurt the 2019 proposal, is that we didn't have a plan. Right. Uh, we never talked about it. It should have, right, to make certain that, that we were addressing equity concerns to support the, 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 the outreach program and to support the participation or involvement of kids and families who might not otherwise get in involved so um, I don't think we can leave that to trust us right yeah I agree that there there is the the direct Y scholarship that they've indicated that their posted rates most memberships which are about over 60 percent yeah right do not pay that rate right. because they're supported by scholarship dollars but point well taken and we'll work that's not on you as much as it is going to be on Council members, we yeah. certainly were clear, and in, 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 whether it's direction or it says bring us back, right. you know, a plan, so somewhat, so we have an answer to a question. This is how it's going to work. Right. Yeah. And I think it starts with the bridge that we that yeah. did now, is which shows the, the discounted rate for residents and then pass holders, and then there are some you know, some additional opportunities beyond that that we discussed concerning holidays, which are really important to folks, and ice. That, that's that alone is a pretty big issue. 
issue, and they've been very accommodating with with talking about having discounted days around the holidays, making sure we have um, multiple days available open to the public mm-hmm. during that time. So it's it's something we, I think we can have more information as we get as we get that further down. So it gets that tighter. Any other questions, comments on this topic? I, I have one just looking at this uh, handy dandy guide here. Yeah. Vampire rules, I am for. It says boards may pass a resolution as an official expression of an opinion. Yes. So that is. That is the one thing you as a board can do. <clears throat> right. And we can, if you are interested, for the September meeting, we can draft a resolution that you all could consider to. Uh, to, to support the I think that's what I'm advocating for, okay. yeah. Okay. So we don't need to do that yet because we didn't have this in meeting until yes. August 22nd, but after that, the September meeting, yeah. put it on the agenda, we'll remember to do that. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you can draft something strong for us, it's easy to ask back to your boards and we will. Yeah. Yeah, we can, we can, I, can, I, can, I can workshop that too. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Any other questions, to- topics? There's one more. In there. Well, there's, there's like the, li- the library, <laughs> the library question. I think you know, kind of. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that That's it's not, not really. Not, yeah, it's just like them going, going, doing the opposite of what we do. The library right? board. The library board. Yeah. Um, voting just for the library. I think it's it's really tough because I think, oh, almost going into it, Paige and I, you know, had discussed many times that it was going to be rec center library, and then like the library board was like, no, can't be. They explain more, or is there I was not at that meeting to that. hear that conversation. So, I mean, I, it sounded like from the person who came up and spoke, they were in tune with their sixty percent, even though there was that one side they wanted to do, no. do it on their own. Yeah. I could make up reasons, but that would not be for sure. I'm just guessing. Yeah. I don't know. We get would change anything at this point, right? I don't understand. It doesn't for that matter. No, no, it wouldn't affect the outcome. Right. So we're yeah, we're, we're past, 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 and we're also yeah. making other things public so we don't. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, this is a public meeting. Uh, okay, one last call on this. Anything else on this topic that we have to discuss before we move on? This is a great meeting. Um, yeah. Why is it called vampire rules? I. Good question. I uh, that, I, because I, that, I mean, this is really cool. I like this. Like, I like being item. a vampire, and I like <laughs> being in the Wild West, but I don't know. I, don't know what I saw the piece in the earth that's, if you look at the mirror, cool parts. cannot reflect any opinion. I think the vampire I reflecting the mirror thing was. Uh-huh. Place, a lot of places I saw it being played off. Equal parts, a lot of mistakes. Very fun. Okay. Very fun. I, I like it. I just wanted to know why it's a vampire. <laughs> Like a friendly vampire, though. Okay, this makes me feel a lot better than nobody else knew. I thought I was the only one that didn't know why. Okay. That's a good question. With that, we will move on to new business. And we're going to do the open space updates this month. Yes. Yes. Yes, sorry. I was in the wrong person. Nope, that's okay. So if you recall last month, um, we had the open space updates on the agendas went out and I realized Daniel was on vacation that month and I really wanted to give her the opportunity um, to present this. So I'm just going to talk briefly to kind of remind this group, when we talk about open space in the past, Dan Wolver was here talking about that. Um, when Dan retired, um, we decided it was made a lot of sense to split that position. He did such a breadth of work um, from his land management ecosystem management, open space management, um, to really create a group that focused on the open space side. And Daniel has a history with Larimer County and Boulder County and the city here working on open space acquisitions, conservation easements. So really on that that side of things, the acquisition, the conservation easement monitoring, um, the agricultural leases, and all that kind of detailed pieces we really want to build into it. So Daniel's here tonight. At some other point, you might have Jim Frick come in because that piece of Dan's work is really citywide. Um, wildlife management, weed management, and that really is in another work group now, but from the airport, the landfill, Jim Frick is doing that piece of it. So Daniel's going to talk about the open space program, kind of where we're at, and I'll let her go from here. Well, and um, I, I just want to um, say, I, you guys have been discussing about 
issues are in the future. We're going to have another ballot issue concerning um, extending the open space and sales and use tax. So, you know, that's, that's the context, and I think um, you guys are called the Parks and Rec Advisory Board, but I think not, not in your title is, is your purview over open space. So um, this, is, this is all stuff you've probably seen before, are a little familiar with, but we're at a point where um, our open space management plan or master plan is five years old. And this is kind of the point where we recommend updating it. So this is just going to be a quick presentation to talk about where we are with open space in the past, present, and future. Um, so first, the land acknowledgement. Um, uh, so we need to acknowledge that we uh, that Longmont sits on the, the traditional territory of the Cheyenne, Arapaho, and Ute, and other indigenous peoples. We honor the history and the living and spiritual connection that the First Peoples had with this land. It is our commitment to face the injustices that happened when the land was taken, and to educate our communities, ourselves, and our children to ensure that these injustices do not happen again. Um, why is open space important? Because Longmont's open spaces preserve natural lands, enhance quality of life for all, and promote conservation and stewardship. And so, a um, little bit about the history of the open space program. Um, this is the ordinance that created our open space program that was developed in 2002. And I'll get a little bit more into these details. So, um, the open space sales and use tax was first passed in 2000. It was approved by the voters in that year, um, and it increased the tax rate by 0.2%, so two cents on every $10 purchase. And it, it, in 2001, we, before the program was even the open space program, we started with acquisitions and, and planning for multimodal transportation connectivity. So then in 2002, the program was formed. Um, the open space trails and master plan was, was written, the original version of it. Um, and we purchased our very first open space property, which is Boulder Creek Estates over here. Um, and I will, and um, it's a 200 acre, 218 acre property. It, it encompasses the confluence of St. Drain and Boulder Creeks. And we are now, 20 plus years later, and it is going to be providing greenway connectivity for the phase 13 of the St. Drain Greenway Trail that is connecting Sandstone Ranch to St. Drain State Park that we are currently 60% um, designed on right now. So we didn't know at the time what, um, that that would be a, a benefit of this first open space that we protected, but it is. Um, and then in 2007, we extended the uh, the, we approved the tax extension on the sales and use tax. So currently, um, even though our program is still young, uh, our open spaces are known regionally as um, prime open space, great places to visit, great places to recreate. And so presently, we have some um, overlapping plans. So we have the original um, uh, open space master plan here. It was 2002, but we did the update in 2018, and now we're due for the current update. We also have our Envision Longmont plan um, that was done in 2016, and the two plans keep each other in mind. Uh, the Parks, Rec, and Trails master plan, as well as the wildlife management plan, and the regional corridors and connections that we're working on currently. These are all the um, current planning uh, projects. And then um, in terms of acquisition, um, the open space program has oversight over land, water, and uh, mineral acquisitions. And we purchase fee simple land as well as uh, conservation easements. Can you explain fee simple land to me? It's, it's <coughs> land that we own outright. Um, also, as part of the open space management plan, we manage leases for these various uses, agriculture, recreation, 
um, water, so some of our farmers lease water from the city, oil and gas, and also um, gravel mining. And um, primary greenways are under the purview of the open space program. Uh, so we have 11 primary greenways going through the city, which um, comprises about 36 miles, and we're continuing to build upon that. Um, so this is just, um, now I'm going to go through a series of maps just to give you a nice visual. Uh, in the yellow, we can see the Longmont planning area. So when you think of Envision Longmont and the comprehensive plan, it's, it's kind of within this yellow. It's in, within the Longmont planning area. And so here we also have our parks. Um, and then when you think of open spaces, city open spaces, they're largely, with the exception of the Greenway Acre, outside the Longmont planning area. You can see a lot of them over here to the east. Um, so this, this includes the fee simple properties, the conservation easements, um, and additional lands owned by other funds. So a lot of, a lot of uh, water resource properties are here around uh, Union Reservoir, and some of them are conservation easements with the purpose of future reservoir expansion. And then if you combine all of our open space uh, acres with what Boulder County has protected, you can, you can see what, what we're looking at as our, as our buffer around our Longmont planning area. So then thinking about the future, you know, even though the, the tax doesn't need to be um, on the ballot and approved until 2030 or beyond, we're, we're still thinking about the future challenges for the program. Um, currently, we're, we're kind of moving out of mostly doing acquisitions and more into a maintenance phase, but that's expensive and getting more expensive. So um, we do want to con continue to have the ongoing funding of the open space sales and use tax. Um, and we also want to acknowledge that the open space fund does get other one-time funding from oil and gas revenue. Um, and partner relationships and joint ownerships, so so um, some jointly owned properties, um, but those those are definitely one time and intermittent and temporary sources of funding. So the the sales and use tax is really the primary um, mode. And what we're seeing on our open spaces is that um, Longmont is growing and people love our open spaces and we're using them. And we're also seeing growth and housing within our Longmont planning area. Um, so opportunities for the future, uh, our open space program is going to be 30 years old, two years before the um, open space tax uh, sunsets. So maybe a time to celebrate, maybe something to think about for um, planning around that. Um, and then just continued uh, opportunities to educate and engage through our volunteer and park ranger programs. Um, and educate around the, the restoration that we're doing on our, our open spaces. Can you go back? Because I'm sorry, I wasn't there. Just the question. Continue to work with our farmers to support regenerative agricultural practices. So working with our partner, the NRCS, seeing how we can support, you know, center peer pivot irrigation, which helps their operations be more successful. It, it brings in water savings, and then when they move on, they take that center pivot, we keep the infrastructure on, on the op agricultural open space. So that's a benefit to them and us. Um, so in the future, you know, these are some of the things that are going on right now with um, Greenway Miles. We're, we're building two more miles of Spring Gulch, St. Brain Greenway phases uh, 12 and 13, um, and then the, the trail that we'll be working on with Weld County and other partners to connect Union Reservoir to St. Brain State Park. And then back to some of that um, management of the open spaces that we do own, uh, it's costly. We estimate that it costs about $7,000 an acre to restore, and, and restoration isn't a one-time thing, it's an ongoing um, process. So um, working to get more dedicated staff to that effort. 
Stewardship plans are something that um, the program hasn't started on, 0% done, but so those are property specific plans that we want to be doing for each unique open space agricultural property. And like I mentioned before, the, uh, the next update of the 2018 open space master plan update. Um, so this is just a summary of, of the things that we want to continue doing in the future with our program. Thank you. Great. Any questions? Yeah. So I keep like over and over it mentions preserving our minerals, like it protecting our minerals, um, also protecting ag areas. And right now we have a new gravel mine going in and another ag area coming off on one on our main trail. So like that seems really counter, and then we're gonna expect people to. I just look at if you walk, go um, the Greenway, St. Grain Greenway, and the left hand Greenway. You go to the left hand corridor, and you go from you go from county open space, which is is being protected pretty well um, right now with Olin Farms and that. And you go and there's. Uh, extra building on each side, and we now have a you know a huge housing complex going in. Um, still bears there though, because I still see bear scat. There's still deer going through, but it's super high impact housing all the way until you got where there was not ever a dedicated open space, but it was rec land, um, and that's being developed into a, a shopping mall. Um, and then we have the rec center that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. So you've got like impact all the way through. It used to be just this, this like nature trail, right? Like, oh, we love our nature trail. Well, now it's not a nature trail. And then it goes, you could continue into high density housing again. And then you've got the new Costco that was approved during the pandemic. And then you go straight to this farm that's gorgeous and that turkeys go through, but they didn't this summer because there's so much going on with Costco. It used to be a turkey nesting ground, but there's this farm and that farmer is losing his lease and he knows it. Talk to him. He knows he's losing his lease with us, with, with Longmont open space. So he's going to lose that light at least and that's going to become something else. And then we're going directly into gravel mine. And then high density housing. And then maybe when we get way, way out there, it will become, it will become open space again. So it's, I just see we like keep, you know, we say we're, for, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like doesn't seem like that's walking the talk of protecting, you know, our minerals, um, leasing another gravel mine um, that used to be that used to be agricultural property and wasn't owned by us. But the agricultural property that lease is not being extended. It's like the one little respite. I mean, our trails go by things like water treatment plants and old gravel mines. That's you know in backs of industrial sites. So. I'm just, this is why I got on this board. This is really, like this, I feel really passionate about it. I really, I, I you, you walked into this job and there's just, there's so much just going on all around us right now and it's not being protected. It's not being protected at all. We have these little easements and then, and every time people keep trying to like, oh, but, we we don't need to use the conservation easement in like a hotel being built right up to that keeps they keep um applying to it like that will what's the river easement i'm like the words are failing me the river easement the water riparian? yeah the riparian, riparian easement setback. yeah the riparian setback you know they keep trying to break it and all that stuff it's just we're getting it's it's really tough it's really tough seeing our open space, where it counts, we can't have all of our open space be away from where people can see it every day. 
Like it can't be far away. It has to be right in front of us, right in our neighborhoods. That's what children get to access. That's what old people, that's what disabled people, that's what people that have transportation problems, you know, there's no, ain't no bus stop taking me out to those conservation areas right there. And if I don't have a bike, that's it. Or if I can't ride a bike, if my wheelchair can't make it out there, it needs to be right here and it keeps just getting built up. And so I'm just putting on, I just wanna say, keep it as nature as possible. Less mowing, less everything. That's what people want, except for a few vocal people that want to walk their dogs on lawns or something. I don't know. But thanks. Sorry about my diatribe, but it's bit, it's big. We need to bring that back. I don't know why we're break, we're ending a lease for an agriculture in there. Yeah. Like, Do you want to respond to Daniel? Oh, it's going to be Tom Adams, which is basically on the Golden oh, Cross property, right. which is going to be north of 119 North Cross Boys. Mm -hmm. Open space sometimes is opportunities. And a lot of times, if you if you look at Boulder Counties with um, Calder Ponds, if you look over at Walden Ponds, if you look at Isaac, these lives are before opportunities where there was a gravel mining lease in place. And for the city then just to give that back to gravel mining company to, to reclaim it and do what they wanted with it. Um, we lose control over that. So all these properties are purchased with that gravel mining right already sold. So that spot north of Golden Ponds, when the city purchased the property, those mineral rights were already severed. So that wasn't a giving up on it. That was, we knew when we acquired that property, that was be gravel mined at some point. The city then has the ability to come in and say, how do we want to reclaim that? And one of the things we're working on right now with water resources is we channelize a lot of our creeks and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's a gravel pond, if you think about Isaac here or Pelham, you got these kind of squarish ponds yeah. with a trail going on them. What we're really helping to do over there is allow the creek to have room to move back and forth and meander and use what you now is like you say, people farm, and I love that you can in there too. But once that gravel mining is done, which the city had no say over because that was sold by the Golden family prior to the city purchasing that, we have the ability to restore that in a way, and we've worked with the mining company to do it in a way that gives the creek much more room to meander have a natural habitat, provide more habitat for turkey ears and cover as you move through that area. So um, that's the, the piece I would like to respond to. The, again, that giving up on the open space value. I think Danielle's passion, background, and history is not giving up on it. Mine is not giving up on it. But I think the piece is you look at this too, this yellow line of one of the things you're trying to get at, you're saying open space needs, needs right here. That's a piece if you look at our comp plans that long, long, a long time ago, when we built our first cities in this community was that we wanted to develop in the, in the center. We didn't want to have sprawl. We wanted to have development where you had services. So there's a real commitment that development happens in the planning area mm -hmm. and then open space doesn't compete with that. So we, we really do not get into acquiring open space within that yellow boundary because that's where primary jobs go. That really is where the housing, the community has decided they wanted to see the housing go. The piece with the greenways and the open space, and I, I heard you pretty loud and clear, if you don't have a bike, but really Longmont provides a great opportunity because kids can get out into their backyard, into a neighborhood park, and onto a neighborhood trail, and onto a greenway, and into an urban natural area like Dickens, and then continue down that same pathway up to a sandstone ranch, or out to a golden pond, and then out to those other properties. So we have a great connectivity, and I think that's the story Danielle's been trying to tell us that we started with great park system, we're building great trail system, and we're really trying to tie that open space piece into it. But again, there's going to be a conversation with different boards and groups and community members about development and how we provide housing for people, how we provide jobs for people, but also keep this natural area. So um, that's how I see these fitting together. And I, I do think, though, that as we look at those areas with gravel mining, that's one of those places where the price is right because we've had mineral severed and a lot of people, you know, it's, it's hard to develop that. So we get a good bite of the apple with a fair price that allows us to do things within that footprint we, we may not have had the chance to do otherwise. And I would just add that um, whenever we can, moving forward, we do acquire the mineral rights whenever we possibly can. Um, and the silver lining of not having the mineral rights is those temporary intermittent uh, royalties that, that come to us into our open space fund and allow us to do, you know, we find another 
piece of the creek quarter that we can protect and it's available to buy them. We have that money, we can buy that and we can continue to, you know, connect those riparian areas that you're speaking of. So I, again, that's why I did, again, I, I keep doing that setup great. You really, this, this group really is our open space sounding board. So getting this input from the community is an important spot for us to get that and hear about it as we're moving forward with plans, how we how we message this to the community, how open space fits into the overall planning of our community in connection with our greenways and our parks and the development that I think, you know, council is very important to them. How do we provide housing for people? How do we provide the jobs for people in our community and strike that balance with our open space program? Thank you for sharing, Aaron. Yeah, that's, I, I feel like maybe I, I'd like the city as a whole to be more cohesive on it. Like it keeps, you know, kind of feels like when you suggest something, it's like that's planning, that's, you know, like that's planning, that's council this, but like I, I've had that same thing that you guys explained to me, explained to me five or six times. I know it. I know this. It doesn't change the fact of what it looks like to a citizen and a trail user. It doesn't change the fact that we didn't have a mother turkey nesting. Uh, you know, there like it doesn't change doesn't change the real deal facts sometimes. And so, I mean, I think some of it can just be like the day to day management could also help. Like, if we had say on the day-to-day -day management, like, can we keep it as natural as possible? And can we mow less? And can we have less, like, you know, post-emergent weed control is one of the silliest things ever, like, to do. It just doesn't work. Like, the contractors come out and everybody goes to seed and gets forest and things like that. And spray green and there's herbicides everywhere. And, I don't know, like this kind of stuff, and just doesn't seem like there really is any way for public to have a say over that kind of thing. Um, they don't, because that's what I want to do, is have a say over that kind of thing. You don't have any say. That's hard. Same. I had a couple things. I guess the first one being, I think there's probably a lot of interest in this topic, and so having another chance to talk about it with the full board at some point in the future would be great. I think I appreciate the sentiment that we have a opportunity to give more feedback. I'd love to do that, but it's, there's a lot there. Um, I think I had maybe two questions I'd ask about. One, what what has led to the change from being more acquisition focused to more focused on monitor? Mm -hmm. just, just the growth of the city and the program and the fact that we acquired a lot and you can see from this map, you know, that the opportunities to acquire have diminished. Um, yeah, the yellow is kind of hard to see, but if you throw in what Boulder County has and the city has, there's, there's getting a lot of those original goals and objectives have been met, but um, it, it is, I think, just the, those opportunities. Right, right. Okay, and then, and then I guess, um, financially, does the department maintain funds to be able to make opportunistic acquisitions if those do happen, either with county partnership or an opportunity comes up. I, I remember hearing when I lived closer to Boulder about the, 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 the savings account that the county open space had and city open space had, and they were always able to pay what seemed like extremely large amounts for really beautiful properties. I would like to think that we could do the same if we came up and we wouldn't be limited in some way by that. By having chosen to pursue maintenance and not a save for future acquisition, does that make sense? You're saying do we still in, in our piggy bank, yes. we have enough to do maintenance and do acquisition as they come up. Yes. Um, well, our open space sales and use tax provides the bulk of it, and mm -hmm. so our, our our last large purchase, the Adams uh, open space, that is 130 acres. Um, we had, we had the money, but we also worked with um, partner relationships to, to get it done. And then we rely on some of those intermittent funding to, um, to, to, you know, to get us through as well. We, don't, we do not have a big piggy bank is the answer. It, it ebbs and flows, I guess okay. is the answer. Yeah. Um, 
the, the reason I ask is that as we look towards 34 and, and re-enabling that, I think 15 years of maintenance is not a great story to people to extend the, the, the tax. And so continuing to consider acquisition, understanding that there's not a lot of opportunities and we have achieved a lot of the goals of the program, but as an option when it's optimistic and available is of interest. Yeah, I think one thing that, and I, I, I hear you, and I, I kind of agree, I agree with that, right? It's not as exciting as yeah. acquisition. However, it's it's just as important now that we have these areas. Sure. How do we how do we educate the public about what what ecological restoration is, how long it takes, how expensive it is. You know, we've been we've we've been starting to go out a little bit with council members and um, residents and just showing them out in the field what, what these open spaces are, what they look like on the ground. And it, it's, it's, it's such a different view than us sitting here and looking at that. Um, but you know, how, how do you do that? In the same way that that ballot issue that you're with the recreation centers, how do you, you know, those pictures aren't gonna be on the ballot either. Yeah, how do you do that? It's a really good question. It's a, it's a piece I think that open space programs struggle with all the time because there's always that portion of your community to say, when's enough enough? And when are you just going to maintain? Even internally, staff gets very overwhelmed because we've got more property we can maintain. So we're going to have maintenance in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. So we have a long-term obligation to maintain these properties that we've done a great job acquiring over the years, and that does not go away. So I think that's a key piece is we have to, you know, people know that this is going on and, you know, like Danielle talked about, restoring those properties after we do the gravel mine so they become places for the mama turkey and all those those pieces. But I absolutely agree. You should always have some dry powder available that when that opportunity comes up, the board of county wants to partner, if we have a, a chance to work with, again, partners we didn't think about past, well, the county coming to us and said they want to work with us on a project. The town of Meads in, could we do a greenway connection and not have that ability? Um, but again, just like your rec piece, we don't want to be in front of you on this, you have nothing on your plate, but those would be the nuance of this. How do you package this in a way that lets people know that our, our goal is to kind of strike that balance you talked about. We, we don't want to give up on those opportunities to expand our program, but we also know that we have an obligation to maintain what we have in perpetuity. And isn't that what GOCO funding often is, is we have this GOCO funding Mm -hmm. From some of the stuff happened before you were here. We got we spoke about last time. Yeah, yeah we can. Yeah. Just, just already look at me. So here's a piece that I'll, I'll talk about more. Yeah. Danielle talked about some of the oil and gas revenue. That that is a little bit of that money that you know isn't the greatest say that we have coming along. Not council done a great job of keeping that out of here, but we have historic oil and gas and gravel that comes into this revenue. Prior to me being here, and I pulled the stuff up for Danielle that and uh, and Stephanie that. There was kind of a commitment those GOCO dollars were supposed to be going towards the creation and completion of the greenways. That's an expensive process. Danielle just hit a snag in her greenway extension, and our bond language and our ballot language for open space is pretty clear that those dollars can be used for open space acquisitions, and those, have, those include the connectivity and connection of those properties to our greenway system. So we can use open space dollars for our greenways. Um, our, our GOCO dollars would not even touch the $5 million underpass she has to put in. So we are leveraging those GOCO dollars right now to complete, to complete the, the greenway, using some open space dollars to do that. Once the greenway is done, um, we have made the commitment. Jeff, uh, Jeff knows I'm aware of the commitment that was made before I got here, that once the greenways are done, those GOCO dollars really have the ability under the language of GOCO to go to the library, to go to the rec center, to go to other places in the community. So I, I really think that as in the future, are those GOCO dollars be able to be looking to, to manage open space or to manage our greenways? I think there's other people in the city that say that there's other ways to use that and we should be looking at our open space dollars to manage our open space. And I'm not saying that the recreation museum or library are a priority, but they need to at least be at the table because we've had this agreement for yep many, many years, and it's time that at least other things are being considered. And we really have 13 with Danielle's working on, and then we have 12, which would go out you know, to, to Golden Ponds and out to Boulder County's property. And at that point, we'll really probably getting close to having the Greenway 
if we did, we'll have that conversation with Jeff on how those funds should be spread across the community. So I don't want you to think that I think that you're doing a bad job or that that, that open space isn't great. I just want it better work. Does that make sense? Because, I, you know, I like you do a good job and I want to do even better. So I want to like push even better, but not even better saying like you are bad, but some of those things, those heartbreakers when you see, see the land go, that's, it's heartbreaking too. And, and it's also really heartbreaking for people when they go vote and they're gonna be like, my trail goes through a, the back of a you know, mall, you know, and you're like, Ugh. you know, so that's gonna be that's kind of some of the hard stories. You know? And my last comment maybe would be that, you know, 11 years is a long time, you know, to wait for the renewal of the tax. Only be, what, nine years before you begin to think about that renewal ballot, but there, you know, you're not constrained by the funding you have if you look for public input on adding more funding to the program. We only have the tax we have, but one great way to get feedback on whether people want to buy more land is to put it on the ballot. And so thinking about changing the program, you don't have to not change it for 11 years and then keep the same tax and funding. Yeah, it increases a bit as the tax revenues go up. But there may be people that are interested in funding at a higher level, but we will, we will never know if we don't ask the voters. And so I'm not saying we have to do that, just an idea that um, one way to increase the amount of the program is to have more money. And if the only option to do that is to either have more revenues from oil, gas, and gravel, or raise more tax dollars, it may be worth trying to find out if that's possible. Uh, not that to say you should do that, but um, that would be a way to transform the program or be able to reach the goals that you have. Any comment on this? I have one, one um, question. So, in an earlier slide, you had uh, dates and like timelines, and I think you were talking about you doing the master plan. I saw 2023 for that. Am I making that up? Yeah, regional quarters and connections. Is that? That's, that's us working on this. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. I guess my, my question here is you said it's about the time for five years that you should be revisiting. Yes. The master plan for this. So we're there. What are you like? What are the inputs into this process that that we're redoing the master plan? And how can we help you through that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's. I think it, it's a, a lot of what um, Ms. Willoughby said. Yeah. Um, about you know having continued conversations and um, you know I I have I have this. The, the 2018 update in front of me and um, you know moving forward what are the important statistics and figures that aren't in here that would that would tell the story that would um, you know would be our guiding document for this process that we want to go through and, and and what are those other ideas and are there are there surveys that we want to continue right doing, you know? right um, I think the question comes to mind is, is this going to be a uh, evolutionary update or a revolutionary update? Is it going to be like a, just a simple thing that we did in 2018, or is it going to be like a full like tear down and like you know, sort of over? I don't think it needs to be torn down. Not torn it's down. Really good <laughs> foundation, but I, I do think what I would like to yeah. see is um, real statistics, facts, and figures mm -hmm. that like you know it's an opportunity, right? I think this is an excellent plan, but but I I want more depth yeah. to it. So I'm assuming there's going to be some kind of like studies that could be part of that process and probably need funding for those studies as well. Sure. Yes, yeah, I mean it takes it takes funding to do a master plan process, but it, I mean not astronomical amounts. Right. I mean, but things that we can help make recommendations for, I guess, through that process. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Definitely, I think this belongs in future. Agendas, yeah. Yeah, I have a bunch more questions, but yeah. I want to save time for other stuff. Oh, no, we don't want to bog you down. We want to do this in front of you. And, and again, I'd love to do some tour there, there are groups out there in our community who are looking at how we could extend this, and we've been kind of working for them to try to time things. That, you know, the council has a lot on their plates, boards have a lot on their plates. We're trying to not get in the way of grassroots enthusiasm for the program, but we also want to make sure that people are coordinating and thinking smartly. This group has learned in the past what not doing that can do for an initiative. So we're trying to walk that fine line of trying to make sure that people in our community that want to make sure this gets extended 
And again, that's a ways out, but again, if we want to bond those, the closer you get to that extension, it's harder to bond those, those dollars too. So that's what having that extension sooner than later could do too. It allows us to make that big acquisition because we can make that, that bonding um, piece of our, our, our piece too. But as we close that gap, it's harder for us to go out and get a good rate on bond if we want to do that. Yeah, it, it also ties into, um, you know, I was here in February and we were talking about um, joint efforts with Boulder County and that kind of future planning. And, you know, that's also a piece of this. And that sort of large picture partner thinking and planning is, is a piece of this too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I look forward to coming back and talking with you about Yeah, when you're ready, let us know. And thank you for the presentation. Yeah, good. Okay, thank we'll you. Swap, we'll, we'll, we'll keep pressing on. So it's similar but different. Uh, next item on the agenda is Greenway updates. Yes, and I asked Stephanie to be here this evening and get another face in front of you where you're probably used to seeing Steve here for this group. Again, um, we've been very fortunate in the fact that as the city's wanted to push forward to getting some of our um, park projects completed, um, those projects were being worked on best. This group it was kind of this Steve and Kathy, then Kathy left, it was kind of Steve doing that. Um, we've expanded that group, and Stephanie can talk about it a little bit, but um, the parks and the greenways are always on that group. Having the open space and open space program take on some of these out of the city planning area portions of the greenways, I think is going to help Stephanie. But still in town, um, her and her staff have been really working on the RSVP and the greenway connections in town. So I'll let her talk about that and any other questions you have for us. Well, I'm assuming that you are curious still about the closure of behind. And it is it is still closed. So you know, we did update in the packet and it, it will be closed until summer of twenty five, most likely, due to the United States Army Corps of Engineers project, which is going to start construction in November. They're going out to bid and they'll select a GC end of September. There's really nothing we can do about it. They're dredging, deepening, and widening the channel. And then they're going to rebuild that um, pedestrian bridge under Boston Bridge as a part of that Boston Bridge project as well. Um, so then the idea is that whenever we do have higher higher flow rates in the spring, um, that the pedestrian area will want to move here and it can be closed. So I don't. I wish I had better information, but there's just no way around it because of what they're doing in the river, moving material out of the river and using that section to try to keep it. So I don't have. Up on that one. Is there anything <laughs> is there that, can be, that can be done to improve the detour for two years? Yeah, that's like, like, temp, like temporary detour, bike lanes. That detour is sketch and scary and hard to manage. It's yeah. Yeah. Boston Ave is, a, is a, a tough street that's quite wide, so it feels safer, but people drive faster on it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of like off angle turns on Boston Ave. And it's like, yeah, it could be, a, yeah. It's going to be there for a long time, which would be mm -hmm. a reason why. Is there anything that could be done to temporarily improve that path yeah. of the detour? The um, team that's managing the project, they're managing the communication on the website um, that's overseeing the, the widening of the channel, the deepening of the channel, and the replacement of the bridge. Um, and we'll go on to this. So, as we know, where the, where the detour is. Um, and I have written in, I totally understand the point of that. Um, so maybe an idea would be, because it's it's road here, it's soft pack here, and it comes back down and connects um, actually over here to get back on the site during the year. If they could do like, and, and this is just me brainstorming right now because I don't honestly know what has been discussed with that team. Um, but doing a, a bike path that maybe has some sort of a buffer between, I don't know if the street is wide enough, but you know, where we, you don't have just a curved line, but maybe like a little... A revolutionary yeah. 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 I mean, it's it's I'm just exploring path. ideas. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Aside from that, the route, that's the simplest route. It, it is. I, my comments really just about the southern part of it. The first avenue is basically a pedestrian walkway that nobody drives on that. But the Boston Avenue connection to Price is very, just 
price that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. where you can is up really and down. complicated, mm -hmm. and one of the sides doesn't stop. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's out of out of a couple of cyclists, I'm happy to navigate that. Mm -hmm. But there's a bunch of other ways to go around, and that decision itself is quite unsafe for any jet stream or cyclist. So it's going to be there for a while. Anything we can do to temporarily slow traffic or provide more. Would you find areas. you know a somewhat of a buffered flight time? Would you prefer over? Right now, it's just I think the Chevron, so they're kind of directing you and saying. Yeah, and I, think, I think your group could have. Yeah. So I have some help. Yeah. So so uh, first off, like if we could use Boeing extension rather than go out to Boston, going out to Boston is is a dangerous prospect anyway. And we're back to where we were three years ago with all the homeless trucks and the campers and stuff on price lines. Yeah. So if you could come off the greenway, immediately take the left, um, staying away from that intersection of Boston and, and Price. And so you would cut. Yeah. Are you can you mind to Scott the mouse real quick? Yeah. Not, There's I, a little zigzag. Yeah, right. yeah. Right. Come south. There's a little zigzag on real. So it's like right here, basically. So there's a there's there's this other little road. There's a whole bunch of stuff that left hand lanes over here, and so um, there's uh, auto body shops yep. and that sort of thing. But it's it's like zero traffic, right? So instead, you're coming out here and you're asking people to basically counterflow on a I sidewalk, which way. there's no place in the entire city you would ask people to do that, mm -hmm. right? And so that is it's not maintained. Um, it's it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't stop the direction. It doesn't stop. Yeah. yeah. So it's if you take, um, I think this is called Boeing Street Extension. Boeing Circle. Mm -hmm. Boeing Circle. Yeah. Is that you went and took this instead? You're at least crossing at the ninety degree yeah. the crosswalk that's put in, mm -hmm. um, and you have some sight lines. Although for little kids, we timed it on Wednesday. Um, it's not great because people come out looking around this this corner. Uh, you have like eight seconds from when you see them to when they're at the crosswalk. So it's not a lot of time for a family of little kids trying to cross that road. So um, so we don't really have a, a solution for that other than the, um, you know, it would be great to renegotiate the size of those little detour lanes. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that's as big as I could get the detour signs. Um, I would because like of the them printer to, or because of what the city would allow? Because the or? city would allow. So somebody in transportation is no longer here in the city because there were not official city detour signs. Um, that's the size I was looking at too. Basically, it's the size of other trail signs oh, in the I city, know. but yeah. we do them as yellow. There's tons of problems. People can't see them. There's people who have sight issues that would love, love us to instead spray on the, on the ground to be able to see it because you have to instead look in you know, uh, kind of a, a busy background to be able to see these signs, to be able to to, um, to see that. But the other thing is, just just get rid of this down here. This isn't this isn't a, this isn't a detour. Price price to sell sunset down here. It, that's super dangerous, like ridiculously dangerous to like even tell people they should be going down over by Nelson and Price and getting onto sunset. Yeah. Point heard. Yeah. And I'll I'll connect with the team that has kind of put this plan in action. Yeah. It actually isn't being damaged by our team as far as the detour, but they can yeah, unless it is needed. And this feedback is good. I'll go back with them. We can talk about you know the signage and maybe doing something like this by the city and and I'll certainly open those discussions when we have the time. Okay. And yeah, there really should be signage. I like. There's no reason why we can't paint on the ground. Like. Well, there I mean, are some chevrons on the, the first street section. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then. But more. But more. Yeah. yeah. Like, we really can do it. Do that. Yeah. Like, I hear you. I'll go back. I don't have any answers right now, yeah. but I will yeah. go back and I'll circle up with you. I'm not sure. Because the other part that would, be, that would be great to see is, you know, it does get maintained in Boston once in a while. Is that because of the bridge project, this alignment is getting pushed out further, as what we understand. But until it does, um, connecting River to South Francis to Price is the preferred route. Like, uh, if you're going to take the southern route, right? Is yeah. to connect right here and then connect over, and, it, and it's all ADA because it's all side. It's all um, it's got a sidewalk for all of it. So, um, you, but yeah, this other part is just. Uh, I would say there's, there's just the two areas of feedback I think are one is the detouring and signage for the cycle detour. The other is there are options for transportation to, for example, add stop signs on price 
at those yeah. stated places. That, I know they don't plan to do that ever, but um, there are other ways to temporarily improve traffic in the area yeah. that wouldn't be permanent. Yeah. That mm -hmm. are options too that if they choose to. Exercise things. Like, that's totally fine. Yeah, I mean, there, there's. The stop sign has been. Cyclists think there's going to. I've been trying to get a stop sign near me. There, cyclists will yeah. think there's a stop sign and people are going to stop, but it's a new stop sign. This is the argument I yeah. any time. Yeah. And it's a new stop sign, so people won't stop. So it would be actually less safe than having a stop right. sign because people might not stop well, there. Yeah, I guess we yeah. shouldn't ask people to stop. Yeah. Well, I know. The, I, the, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I like. And you know, Boston will probably get resurfaced after the bridge project, sure. and so, um, so that's been the long-standing reason for not. Yeah, so it's not saying that. Yeah, this that southeasterly path yeah. through that community, and then straight just down. Yeah, straight pretty deep to the community too. Either way, there's streets oh, to get through I see. the price. Yeah, and so there's an the line, the alignment's going to be moved further west, even so. Um, well, that bridge is. It is. It's getting longer, but it's it's going to be on. It's going to get longer on this side as well, from what I understand, mm -hmm. not just the west side. So you're asking for that other portion of the bike route because right now they're going. Um, they're getting up here, coming down, coming back, yeah. going up. But over here, you're saying to have a place for them to come down yeah. and go through. Because right now the road goes down here. So right, yeah, but I don't know. And that's what I'll need to check in with. And, and hopefully nobody actually really does that. I just think taking both signs down would be much better. Because I run into, not physically, but seeing cyclists in, at sunset in like Nelson. And there's no reason why a cyclist should get a sunset in Nelson looking at sun. It's not a good place for somebody to be. And so, um, yeah, uh, it's, yeah, this is not, it's, it's, it's a whole dangerous mess. Right. Um, so um, and then you then you're gonna try to get onto place on it. I guess so. This is Colorado material here. Yeah. I guess it comes down to what's the area of this that they're going to put, you know, need for construction. And I'm guessing that. So this is Colorado right. material. Right. But there's, but there's Riverside that road right here. That, yeah, that's so right. South River. River Road. Yeah. River road. Yeah. 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 I don't know what you're talking about. I end up just about you know burning my butt getting on the home park. Yeah, if you, get, if, you, if you can get to this section here, but if they close that, then that's, that's well, well, right. so that, yeah. yeah, so the idea is that there's the southerly route is Sunset, Boston, River, Francis, Pike. The northerly route is um, but, um, Bridge, um, Bowen, Circle, Bowen, First, right? So right. that way so you, have, you have directional this detours. Right. This is that Bowen Circle place I was talking about. Right there, yeah. Rather than so, up here. So that is a directional a crosswalk here. detour, which it isn't now. It's sort of like go choose either way. And most people are choosing the, the northern path to go up and down. I'm surprised there's a crosswalk there with the mm -hmm. proximity to the intersection. Yeah, the crosswalk was put in as a PC for this um, because we couldn't, what Bicycle Longmont argued was a removal of the center lane. Um, so you could create bike lanes, mm -hmm. and it was like, well, we're going to resurface it any days now. That was five years. From, that was five years ago. So, if you just re, you know, if you did center lane it, you could put a real bike lane in, and it would be. A I don't mean to, to add to the bureaucracy of this too, but I, I, again, since almost our first day, that's what Stephanie wanted to look at. We've we've driven it. She's ridden it. Yeah. Uh, we've tried to figure it out. But she does have some constraints with working with engineering and transportation too. So it's, it's something we can't fix in this room. It goes back to her piece. <laughs> it's in planning support, it's in engineering, but Stephanie is on those teams. And I think this conversation will be, she, she'll be good at kind of and taking this message forward. As my now six months has, <laughs> has become a thing, I, um, I am getting to be more angry with Stephanie, and so I'm happy to reach out to her. We do talk a lot, um, but hearing your concerns, I think we could find ways to make it better. They're engineers, right? That's what you do. You yeah. just make it better. So yeah. well, we're good. I mean, we'll just see. I'll bring it back to you next month. Okay. Okay. And then yeah. we can have a small thing. Yeah. No, you know, yeah. Small and <laughs> and we can see on the on the bicycle side there are people who are arguing for some Amsterdam approach with Tim Lowry, which is That's not. Right. 
Well, it's like the almost like closure of Austin right. Avenue and putting the grass space in yeah. like when that's going to happen anytime soon. We have to build a bridge first. Like, so there's, um, I got me in fourth year school. So, so, <laughs> so there are even, you know, people in the bicycle community, there's a, there's a big range as well. But I mean, just having a, a safe harbor that can cross and, you know, more clear directions would, would help a lot of people. That's all great suggestions. Yeah. The, the zigzag over the building, and it, I think, this is similar, I'm just, I just think, I can just hear them saying the crosswalk link. So that would be the concern to me. But. Yeah. Um, the, not any, uh, the, not the, any yeah. less dangerous than what it is now. The, the railroad um, crossing has gotten, has deteriorated pretty bad. Mm -hmm. um, going southbound on Bowen um, over the railroad um, at First Avenue, there is a, now a giant hole uh, that got spray painted by someone like three months ago, but um, it still is a good sized hole um, that, that's there. That's basically in the bike path um, or car tire path, depending on preference of rider lanes. Um, but it needs new timbers. You know, it's pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, it would be great if there was something to put the cement in, but you know, I guess we'll go this way. Well, they just did do an improvement to the tracks down on mm -hmm. over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 On the east side of town, um, and then Daniel's got the place that he came to the meeting at. So, okay. so um, there's a lot of things underway. I am. Um, I just made an offer to Lisa McNeil to back for my position, and she comes from across the country, and she's pretty got a lot of great skill sets, mm -hmm. and I think she'll be a great addition to the team. So she's going to come in, and then I'm working on an offer to get another. So we're going to have a team of four faculty members to the team. And then we're going to see some stuff that are being knocked off the list. Um, it's been a very interesting six months. So I feel like we took it and we had backup and we, we lost it and now we're going to get it back. So. And then Danielle will be being a project manager for her group, which will be more focused on some of these overlapping greenway projects that fall under the open space umbrella, but also water resource projects. If we're talking about doing the reservoir expansion, that project manager role can focus on some of those as well. Um, just so those groups know. Just because, again, going back to that cost of managing, maintaining, and acquiring, um, we had to pull phase 13 really off of our work plan because we need those, sorry, 12 going, you know, we asked you to pull that off our work plan. So we had to shift those dollars over to 13 to make sure we could take it to council as a fully funded project. We'll reevaluate that next year. It's a critical piece for the community and for, you know, this group to try to get that full extension done. but. Just if you look at things in LCA yeah, there, that 12 was pulled off just so we could shift those dollars over to Danielle's. Question on that. I feel like two months ago or three months ago, there was a comment about one last landowner on the 12 section and we've almost being done with progress on that. Yes. Um, it's on 13. I thought it was 12. No. The, we have one there too. This oh, is your yeah, part. Oh, you're asking about 12. Yeah. 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 They both have one. So <laughs> Danielle can talk about her, yeah. her hiccup there and getting more these costs to right. come up with. Um, the Golden family, when they sold and they're developing that, they have family members that all have to sign off on this. Um, Reggie Golden has a property manager that's really helping to shepherd that through. Um, that name, we talked about Tom Adams and the farmers over there in North 119. We talked about our Costco piece. We talked about some open space. That family's involved in a lot of stuff that they're working with city on, so this is kind of dropped to a lower level on that, that piece going out west on that. But it, it's not off her radar, it's not off my radar, and we're, we're working on that. All right. Um, I mentioned in the 13 update to mention briefly that um, that 60% design was completed. Correct, yes. Um, and I, I asked this maybe a few months ago, but that's not public though, right? Those designs, 60%, um, like it's not published somewhere until it's final. It's not published, yeah. but um, I can show it. It's changed a lot in the last right. year because of the property changes and like that. Right. But obviously, I think understanding um, the portion 
Yeah. Dr. Tedder would be awesome. Just so you know, because I'm talking to Harold today again, too, oh, that okay. Danielle's been stuck in is um, the big, probably the biggest change in this, and Danielle can talk about some of the challenges she's faced, is that, remember, this was supposed to go under 119 at the St. Brain Creek, but after 2013 flood, the state redid their hydrology, and they pulled that off the table and said, we can do nothing that impacts a rise in the floodplain there. So the whole plan of going under an existing underpass was taken off the table by the same agency we're partnering with to get the project done. And who is across the road from us waiting for us to connect. So it's, it's been a little bit of a frustration, but Danielle has really pushed on, is there any way we can use that? And we're like the guinea pigs in this new floodplain experience. You want to talk about your experience on that, Danielle? Um, it's just it's, it's just added complication and time to the project, but we're, we're through a lot of it. Um, we've worked through those details, and that's why you know I can show you this. This is our 60% design plan, and it shows you where we're crossing now a, a little bit to the west to get to the north side of 119. And then we'll travel across um, heading east um, in the CDOT right-of-way to connect to the state park. And to avoid a rise in the floodplain over there, we're building a 240-foot span, single-span bridge um, without piers. Wow. <laughs> so that we okay. meet the CDOT model and hydrology that is required. That's huge. Yeah, there are three bridges on this project now. That were never contemplated in the beginning. I mean, just the one underpass. But it's well, now we're building a new one there. We've got the 240 foot span one there, and then we we have to avoid the cell phone tower on County Road Five. So we're building a bridge there as well. So the bridge, okay. So we're taking bridges not over water, but over yes. cars. Uh, well, one is under a highway, one is over some water, but uh, the majority of it is going on. Uh, I'm not criticizing it, I was just clarifying. Like, yeah. I was just, but so the bridge is over cars. No. No. The bridge over cars. No. Underpass no. under cars. Yeah, the underpass is going under the highway. Oh, I thought. That's so, why you said that we couldn't do it. Okay. No, we're, so we're building a new one. Okay. So there, are, sure there are existing damaged underpasses um, that cross 119. Mm -hmm. And that so, is what we can't use. So Daniel, we just kind of show what goes under right now, what the original intent was, where the creek goes under. Mm -hmm. That's where we were supposed to go. And with the new floodplain modeling, that was taken off the table. So we're going to build a new underpass here. So when David mentioned it, that, that's a piece of this project. It's a $10 million, 2.5 mile section of trail. Five million of it is this new underpass that we're building to get under there. And then we will, um, and then we will do the, the bridge to connect into the state park over here, north here of the highway. This is the single span bridge. Oh, the like wetland area. Yeah, because okay. yeah, it's, it's a floodplain. Okay. And then we have to cross the creek to get back over to so the So the, the, there will be a crossing there. Um, and then this is the underpass, that's the second. And then there's a, there'll be a bridge over here. Okay. So all over this view shed of Boulder Creek Estates, which we talked about in the presentation, mm -hmm. This bridge here will be overlooking all of this. Okay. It'll be, it'll be, the views will be spectacular on this section of trail. Yeah. Over here too. And yeah. it keeps us out of the eagle habitat, it keeps us out of the floodplain, it does a lot of... Yeah, I mean, I, I, th this is what was coming to my mind when you were speaking before, is that, um, you know, when this trail was first imagined, we thought about being down here, down by the creek, down right in the wild area, but instead we're choosing to be out of the wild area, not fragment the wild area, keep the wild habitat here, you know, one of our last unfragmented wild places in the middle of the city, and be up here and see, get the views into this, put educational signage here, and, and keep all of this intact. Even though the river moved, all of those standing dead cottonwoods that are down there is, 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 um, eagle roosts mm -hmm. that are being currently used. And so um, working with our partner CPW, we really looked at this and thought, we can still have an amazing trail experience if we stay out of there and keep it unfragmented. And just to give Danielle, so, just so, so people know what she went through, this was a big internal and external conversation because most people think about the Greenway right along the creek. And 
they want to experience is I mean the human evolutionary piece to be along water too. Mm -hmm. So to really pull that greenway out of that area to protect that habitat um, was well, a hard it was conversation. Popular when I, <laughs> it wasn't even the consultants that we hired were like, "What? What are we doing? Why did we?" And but now we're on we're we're all on the same page. I had a couple of quick questions. Um, this is very cool to see, so awesome work in there this far. Um, how will the alignment work along Sandstone Drive? Um, so so let's see. Comes, so we're talking about more from over the visitor center up to the here, yeah. turn off. Um, that's the visitor center, yeah. yeah. So um, it'll, it'll be alongside the road here. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, it'll continue. This is the upper parking lot. And then we have, um, it'll come, so we've got these two landowners here that share a driveway, so it'll continue along the road and then it'll, it'll cut in to get, it'll go over their driveway and it'll cut in to get up onto here. So the, the, this is Skyway Drive, all the businesses, collision, etc. all their driveways come out over here, but we will be behind them. She went ahead and picked up right the needle with neighbors that are yeah. have a trail in their backyard and they moved out that wasn't the right expectation. And this so. landowner, yeah, she's going to have, instead of this view, she's going to have a trail. Yep. This is her window, this is her window. But, so. And she oh. was okay with that? Yeah, well, Daniel's made her okay. Okay. <laughs> and had a lot of conversations <laughs> about it, yeah. Good luck on that. What, what goes along the back of all these businesses? Is there any right of way to connect from the trail into that area? Into which area? Into that the industrial like area. Yeah. So you can no. stop for a few years, you can sit here up above it. They, there's a fence on those. The there, the collision has a fence, yeah. yes. And and these two developers that are coming in are going to be doing similar to what Collision is yeah. doing. Um, so, no. Okay. I mean, yeah, you would think they'd want it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. think yeah. they'd want it because who, I mean, you've already ridden 15 miles, you want right. to stop for a beer. We had all the conversations about all of that. You know, one, we imagined at one point that maybe the trail would be here. This is going to be a better user experience. They'll still get the bike and, and, and foot traffic as a result of the trail coming close. So, I want to one question about the, on the Sandstone Drive, the part that goes on parallel to the road there. Yes. Um, did you look at options to put on the road, like bike lanes? It seems like a lot of trails are built along a very quiet road. Like I, I ride that section all the time, and there's the only reason to drive down that is if you're going to the visitor center, which is not that many cars or public works or whatever that site is there. And um, it seems like building a new path through a pretty steep, complex kind of hillside there is probably pretty expensive. And is there any way to, I don't know, smooth things along? Well, it's less expensive because it's following the road, and yeah. what is it? Huge consideration here is ADA and, okay. and do, doing the, the best we can to make it, uh, you know, bikeable and ADA compliant uh, here. So yeah, we looked at um, going out and around and being over here. We looked at maybe coming up, and we looked at all all possibilities. And the path of least resistance is to be here along the road. You know, there 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 is. I don't know. I mean, I kind of agree. Riding that road isn't scary at all. Like, it as far just as steep to go right next to it, and we're putting a whole bunch of new concrete right next to a bunch of other new stuff. Right. Well, we are. Up. We we do yeah. have drainage issues going on with the road here, so we're we're going to be improving that with okay. the with um because we have you know let's see where did we go from here? So right at the visitor center, we've got um the way it is right now when this was built somehow um. Now the the water washes over the road yeah. when there's a, any sort of storm event, so that'll be corrected by our trail coming through. We'll deal with the drainage issues, so we'll we will see improvements there, and it'll be safer. Um, and you know, we we do have, and I acknowledge it doesn't occur way down here; it occurs up here in our parking lot. But we do have, you know, soccer traffic, mm -hmm. lots of sports traffic, mm -hmm. and things like that. So. Continuing to have a, a trail that is is not the road it was was the thought. Uh, do you mind if I ask uh, Spring Gulch too? They look great. Um, they start at stand the stand the desk now with a full design with our space team. Okay. Um, and I understand 
the area of 622 West Penn. And so they're working with a um, bit of an engineer on the Virginia State Conservation Group. Okay. I'll get you more information. Okay. Yeah. Add it to the list. It's probably our number one question. Everybody's like, oh, we're like, got, got to Union Grants, now I have to turn around and go back the other way. Because, I mean, half the year, the, the dirt roads are so muddy or muddy right. that nobody wants to run on them. So, yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Let's um, head on over to the <clears throat> items from the packet updates. Is there any items in the packet that you think we're going to question? <laughs> Scott, you go first. Um, okay. Um, so I thought one was was uh, kind of funny from uh, today, and I just went to, so it's uh, page nine, the E. coli level at Union, oh. um, that we tripped over it, I think, today or something. It was like, like, yes. Really in was that in the packet point. today? Or you no, no, it's in, it. the, in the packet. It yeah. says, we're doing great, and our E. coli levels are so low that we're, we're eating all these other people, but yeah. So our E. coli numbers, I, I asked boys just in the rain the other day. So we got the numbers from our water quality lab. Um, so first, I'll give you what what our typical numbers are, which is around two. Um, the state asked us to close it around two thirty. I think is the number for that. And somehow in our last testing, we were over seven hundred. Yeah. And they don't know if they, you know a lot of times that's you know like big rain events and. It, Washes things out, the temperatures get right, does it? And those things seem to be in play, so the wind is what they were, they had all that wind pushing stuff down towards the swim beach. That's just a, a, a guess, right? Just trying to figure out something that would have made sense to align with that high number. So, really, we're having it retested, is the biggest thing. And, you know, just you know, following state guidelines, we definitely closed the beach. I can't imagine how many people were out there today, but Jeff, did you hear anything on your side different than what? Yeah, just heard that. Well, the beach actually closes Wednesday. I just want to say, like the brightest spot thing, am I allowed to uh, say thing? The horticultural maintenance that we're going to switch some turf, high water turf, to lower landscaping, like hopefully just the grass that would normally grow without irrigation and turn off those things, that makes me happy. Thank you. Just, just so you know, we had a media other water resources group, and this is, again, that collaborative piece that we're always working with. Uh, water conservation group, our parks group, timbers group, Ben um, Grant has a great background on that. So we're, we're looking at you know, making those changes work appropriate, but Stephanie, her group, the other piece that we hope we don't have to do conversion here in the future is that we're trying to design these parks in a way that, that does it as well. So yes. again, you know, you and I are on this too. We're always going to have that blending of we can put, want that bluegrass turf to do those pieces, but where we can minimize that, um, we're always looking for that. So it's super exciting. Great. Yeah, we had some great results. I think that's, I'm just going to throw it because I think it's exciting too. Um, you've seen other communities try this and they've had huge failures. I mean, they've paid over a million dollars to tear turf out put a low water turf in, it fails, the community gets upset, they have to tear that out, put new grass back in, and now they probably never, never have a chance at the trust of the community. We have done small trials around the city where no one knows if we fail, and if it fails, it's not a huge cost. We now have information on what not to use. We have areas that have worked really well um, and kind of tucked away places, and so as we go forward with larger projects, I think we have a good toolbox to pull from, and it's stuff we can share with the community what has worked well or not. So I think ours is going to be an education piece, too. That's cool. Sam, I think I had a question. I have two, uh, two things. Yeah. One on Union, also on Union. My first year as a pass holder has been amazing. I love yeah. on Union. I was surprised, or was it sad to see the closing date? I just haven't followed it in years past. The closing is just the swimming beach, mm -hmm. so you can still paddleboard, oh, you can still go to the beach. beach. Yeah. And just the swimming and like right, was all the changes. Yeah. Okay. I think on the website, it sounds like the whole thing is closing. So just basically clarifying something about like, you can still do 90% of what you do at Union, but, because 
the date, the only dates you see for opening are like it's open for the season and then it closes August nineteenth, swimming in the wolf, you know, kind of see the river it's at. So, um, but I've just had a great experience as a pass holder this year and it's my first time. So kudos to you guys on what a great facility it is. Um, another question was in the packet. There's a mention of the Thompson renewal, which is my neighborhood, which I'm psyched about. Um, that's yours, maybe. Um, I saw that it's potentially going to RFP soon. Where is that? Do you remember the separate accounts? Cool. So we'll get notified. Awesome. That was a question. Um, People were asking about it. Yeah. So we're going to get the, uh, the website updated with all of our communications. Um, I know you're going to come in soon, so we'll have that one up. The eight and ten projects will be in the RFP. Nice. Tomorrow's tomorrow's. Um, but Elisa, she's one of our project managers, put her name on with Ashlyn. She used to be a technician in that zone <laughs> for seven years, so she knows the struggles and She's got some great ideas and she's got a great team, so they'll be doing that. Um, that one, I think, is actually, I said a good team. I think that one's actually awarded this month. This one, I'm not getting, but it will be awarded in September and the RFP will go out two weeks later. Okay, okay. Great, very exciting. Thank you. I think that's all I have. Any other comments from that packet? Yeah, I'll give you some more. I was going to say thank you, Steve, for uh, taking the honor for opening your mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay, let's move on to... I think uh, it's public record, so just turn to the camera and say... Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll check the time mark and send it. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, go get my credit. Items from staff. Items from the board that aren't... We never actually bring things up in this session, do we? Because we cover it in the packet updates, and etc. Any items from the board that are not related to the packet updates necessarily that you want to raise? I was going to mention a resolution, but we uh, talked about already. Um, so. For next yes. meeting, because it'll be after the second battle reading. Yep, definitely agree with that. Okay, uh, with that, I think we could probably move on to an adjournment. Does anyone have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Is a second? Yes, sir. All right, all in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Great.